welcome to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. Hear and learn through the success of others how to build the life and business you deserve. Learn to overcome failure, what it means to seek out growth, and how to become the best possible version of yourself. And now, here's your host, coach, entrepreneur, husband and father, and author of the number one best-selling book, Survive, Scale, Soar, Jeremy Williams. And welcome back to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy, and today is going to be a real talk. We have two formats on this podcast. One is real talk, and that's going to be time spent with me, some of the ideas and thoughts that I have on what's going on in this world and with our small businesses. I also have success talks. That's where I interview some of the top business people in their perspective industries, and we learn from them the things that have made them successful. And so if this show impacts you today, gets you to think differently, uh, makes you laugh, make sure that you share it with somebody. That's the way that we're going to impact more people in this world is for them to have a new perspective and to be able to think um, independently of what we're being told. So today, I want to talk about social media. And social media is a, a challenge, and especially in the world of small business, because if you go to any course, any conference, they're going to tell you, you've got to be on social media, and they'll make you feel like you need to be on social media all the time. And I think I was listening to another podcast the other day, I think in time, we're going to look back on this era of social media, and the changing of our communication, a lot of this stemmed from COVID and being pushed into isolation. We're going to look back at this time and realize that we put way too much effort and emphasis in social media. And we're going to really regret and wish that we could have gotten some of that time back. Uh, in fact, I know a lot of people that built their business solely on social media. And over time, they've just disappeared, uh, especially after COVID and people are starting to normalize and go back to the way that they were doing things before, uh, where they were meeting in person. Uh, they're going to networking events, uh, they're having parties, they're having uh, open houses for in the case of real estate agents, all these different things that had come back that, you know, at the time social media was fulfilling because of isolation. And one of the things I want to point out today is a powerful, powerful uh, thing for you to recognize, and it's not just in social media, it's in the world, it's in anything, it's in any relationship, any person that you follow, including myself, is perception is reality. And that's a very powerful statement when it comes to social media, because you can create a perception, you can be anybody you want to be. In fact, I went to a training one time, and the instructor got up in front of probably three to 400 people and said, you know what, you don't have to be you on social media. You don't have to be a person that's not successful right now. You don't have to be a person that has lost weight. You don't have to be a person that's achieved all these great things. You can be anybody that you want. So creating the power of perception and people are seeing that message and they're consuming that then that becomes their reality. That's how they see that individual. It's a very, very powerful play, yet a very deceptive play, I, I truly believe. And it's not healthy for those that are consuming it. It's not healthy, healthy for those that are choosing to put that content out there. And I want to start first with the person that's putting it out there. So when you create that perception and you don't have to be that person you want to be, then you're not being true to yourself and who you are. And I've, I've been there. I've, I've been there and I've wanted to be somebody different. Uh, yet the problem is, is over time, people will begin to sniff it out. And it usually is sniffed out first by those closest to you in your circle. When they realize that, you know, I'll use myself for an example. They say, well, Jeremy, that's not really how he operates. You know, I, I go out and I, or I meet with his family or I do these different things. And that's just not who he is, you know, the audio and the visual doesn't match. And they begin to sniff this out and realize that you're, you're being fraudulent in the way that you're, you're um, putting yourself out there. And so when people see that, they no longer begin to trust it. And with most small businesses, 
one of the most important things you need to, to accomplish when you're going out into the world and trying to develop and build your business is trust. If you don't have trust, then it's very, very difficult to do business and you're not going to last very long. And so, you know, the, the power of putting it out there, people perceive it, they start to sniff you out, and then they realize that you're a fraud. The other thing that it does to you, uh, I think it's an internal thing, is that now you're a conflict with yourself. You know truly who you are, yet you're trying to be this other person. And there's a battle that goes on there. And that, that battle is, is not a very pretty one. And it, I, I believe, and this is my personal opinion, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, um, I'm not a counselor, I'm a coach. Yet I truly believe that could lead to depression, some mental illness. You hear it a lot. Um, you know, they talk a lot about it with uh, teenagers and, you know, the impact that it has of trying to be somebody different than they truly are uh, via social media. And so it could be really dangerous, uh, not only for the small business owner in terms of people smelling you out, but it could also be very dangerous in terms of that internal conflict with yourself. For the consumer side, it can be dangerous in the fact that they hire somebody maybe based on who they think they are, and it's really not what they're going to get. So somebody keeps saying, I'm a top real estate agent, or I'm a top this or a top that, and they get into the business and real, or get into a contract or get into relationship with this individual. Maybe they haven't gotten to, to an agreement yet. And they realize that they've gotten into a relationship with the wrong person. Again, the audio doesn't match the visual. Who they're, who they're putting themselves out as is not who the consumer is getting. And that can be really damaging uh, to that small business owner's reputation um, is that people begin to think differently about them. And believe me, people, people talk. Uh, I know this personally. People will talk about other people that are being fake on social media. And so it's, it's really important to understand that as a small business owner, that if you're not being true and authentic to yourself, what you're offering, whether it be a service or a product, is that the consumer on the other end is going to figure you out. Um, it might not happen immediately, uh, might happen, happen after a transaction, yet you know, small businesses thrive on repeat and referral business. And so if they had a really bad experience with you and they, you know, maybe they sniffed it out after the fact, is they're never going to do business with you again. And they're never going to refer you out to anybody. In fact, you know, I've always heard that if you've done something really well, that one person will go tell one other person. If you do something really bad, that one person is going to go out and tell 10 other people how bad of a, a job that you did. And so it's really important that when we're putting out our social media messaging is that we stay true and authentic to who we are as a business owner, uh, maybe as a team leader, um, you know, be representative of our true culture of our organization uh, versus what we think we want people to believe in the hopes that they'll do business with us just because they perceive us in that way. So today, I want to keep it short, but I want to really stress to my small business owner friends, uh, this doesn't pertain only to small business owners. This, this pertains to anybody that uses social media. Um, you know, I talk to my kids about it all the time, is that make sure you're being true and authentic to who you are. Don't feel like you have to be somebody else or don't put yourself out there as somebody else because there's a lot of harm that it's going to do to that, that person themselves. And it could also cause harm to others. So I hope this message resonates with you. I'd love to hear from you. If, if you're dealing with this as a small business owner, or you see others, you know, I'd love for you to share what's happening out there in regards to uh, social media and small business. It's ever changing. Uh, I don't believe it's an evil tool. Um, I believe it's a tool uh, that can do good by those that do good with it. And so I'm not here today to say stop doing social media, um, you know, stop engaging in all these different platforms. 
I'm just saying, make sure that you're doing it in a way that serves you well, and it serves those that consume the information that you put out there well. And I think if that happens and that changes, the, the health of social media will improve greatly and can be the powerful tool that I think it was initially meant to be uh, when it was created and not the monster that it's probably become. So I hope this helps you kind of figure this out and maybe make some changes, maybe small changes, maybe big changes in the way that you use social media. And if I could ever help you and your small business, make sure that you reach out to me. You can find my website at www.redhawkcoaching.com. I do work with small business owners, helping them maximize their efficiencies and grow their business and not just grow their business, but also live out a great life. So if I can help you with any of those aspects, reach out again to me. You can find my website at www.redhawkcoaching.com. And until the next episode, onward and upward. Thank you for listening to the Survive, Scale, Soar podcast. If you heard something that made a difference in your life today, share it with someone that might benefit and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Learn more about the host of this podcast and coaching services offered by Red Hawk Coaching by visiting www.redhawkcoaching.com.